as a nurse, you need to know the potential complication to watch out for after surgery. After a craniotomy, the nurse must watch out for intracranial pressure, bleeding, meningitis, and hypopituitarism. If a sublation transpenoidal surgery has been performed, then the nurse needs to watch out for cerebral spinal fluid leak, infection, diabetes insipidus, and hypopituitarism. Mastering the Master Gland, a comprehensive guide to pituitary disorders for NCLEX success. This topic is a special request from one of my subscribers, Catherine A. She wanted some help on topics around endocrine. Don't be shy to reach out to me if you want me to cover a topic. I'll even include a shout out. When she told me that she's been watching my videos non-stop and how I broke down the topics well, it really inspired me to keep going. I read all of the comments on my channel, and I just want to say that you all are keeping me going. Today, on behalf of Catherine A, I'll be focusing on pituitary gland problems, which include hyperpituitarism, hypopituitarism, diabetes insipidus, and SIADH, which is short for syndrome of inner appropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. Try saying that three times fast. So, let's get started. Before we get into pituitary gland issues, we need to know exactly what the pituitary gland does for the body so that we know exactly how the body is affected when the pituitary gland is not working properly. The pituitary gland is part of the endocrine system, which consists of glands that create, store, and release hormones into the bloodstream. The pituitary gland is is divided into the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. They both have their own functions and hormone production. Where is the pituitary gland located? The base of the brain. What regulates the pituitary gland? The hypothalamus, which sends signal to the pituitary gland through hormones and nerve impulses. We don't give pituitary gland enough credit for regulating vital body function. When we think about the hormones of the body, we don't think of the pituitary gland that produces and releases these hormones. But after this video, you will now. Growth of body tissues. That's the pituitary glands. Water absorption by kidneys. Pituitary glands again. Sexual development and function. If you guessed the, pituitar the pituitary gland, great job. You are correct. What are the hormones that are regulated by the pituitary glands that I keep mentioning? Take a look at this list. The hormones of the anterior low production include ACTH, FSH, GH, LH. MSH, PRL, somatotrophic growth stimulating hormone, TSH. The hormones of the posterior low production include oxytocin, vasopressin, which is an antidiuretic hormone, which can be abbreviated to ADH. Quick NCLEX pop quiz. Arnie is a nursing student that is studying for the NCLEX. He is quite stumped and wants to know which of the following hormones is produced by the posterior gland. A. ACTH B. GH C. Oxytocin or D. TSH And the correct answer is C. Oxytocin. Rationale. Oxytocin is a hormone that is released from the posterior pituitary. ACTH, MSH, and TSH are hormones that are released by the anterior pituitary gland. Let's break it down in a way you won't feel too overwhelmed. Oxytocin is involved in labor contractions during childbirth, breastfeeding, and sexual reproduction. ACTH is short for adrenocorded Cotrophic hormone, which tells the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. Now, cortisol is the hormone that affects the stress response, metabolism, and regulates the immune system. GH is short for growth hormone, which stimulates growth in childhood. 
TSH is short for thyroid stimulating hormone, which stimulates the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormones regulate the body's metabolism, energy, and nervous system. Now on to pituitary gland disorders. Hyperpituitarism and hypopituitarism occur when the anterior pituitary gland is affected. See how being in the front of the pituitary gland can have its ups and downs? Hyper and hypo. Diabetes insipidus and SIADH occur when the posterior pituitary gland or hypothalamus are affected. We can keep DI and SIADH in the back for now while we focus on hyperpituitarism and hypopituitarism for now. So we're going to talk about the hypo hypopituitarism. Knowing the hormones that affect the anterior pituitary will help you understand the common symptoms of hypopituitarism, which include the growth hormone deficiency, thyroid stimulating hormone deficiency, adrenocorticotrophic hormone deficiency, gonadotrophin deficiency, and prolactin deficiency. What can cause hypopituitarism to occur? Tumors trauma, encephalitis, autoimmunity, or stroke. Any of these can affect the pituitary gland. Hypopituitarism can be treated with hormone replacement therapy to make up for the lack of hormone that the pituitary gland is not able to produce. Hyperpituitarism, also known as acromegaly, occurs when there is hypersecretion of growth hormone. This means that there's too much growth hormone being produced by the anterior pituitary gland. What can cause hyperpituitarism to occur? It is usually due to a tumor which is usually benign. The most common type of hyperpituitarism is caused by prolactinoma, which is a prolactin-producing tumor. Unexpected milk production can occur. Menstrual function and fertility can be affected in women. Erectile dysfunction or lack of libido are symptoms that are seen in men. Grown hormone needs to be suppressed or blocked. The client may need radiation of the pituitary gland or stereotactic radio surgery. Keep hypophysectomy in the back of your mind because this may be needed, which is the removal of the pituitary tumor. Now, if the entire pituitary is removed, then the client will not have a pituitary gland to secrete hormone, so ADH, cortisol, and thyroid hormone will need to be replaced for a lifetime. The hypophysectomy would be done via craniotomy or sublation transphenoidal approach. As a nurse, you need to know the potential complications to watch out for after surgery. After a craniotomy, the nurse must watch out for intracranial pressure, bleeding, meningitis, and hypopituitarism. If a sublation transphenoidal surgery has been performed, then the nurse needs to watch out for cerebral spinal fluid leak, infection, diabetes insipidus, and hypopituitarism. Quick and clicks pop quiz. Arnie is a nursing student who has been stumped on the difference between the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. Help him out by choosing which of the following pituitary gland disorders is caused by a damaged posterior pituitary gland. A. Diabetes insipidus. B. Hyperpituitarism, C. Hypopituitarism, or D. Hyperparathyroidism. And the correct answer is A. Diabetes insipidus. If you guessed this correct, great job! Rationale. Diabetes insipidus is caused by damage to the posterior pituitary gland or hypothalamus when there is too little ADH being secreted. Hyperpituitarism and hypopituitarism are caused by damage to the anterior pituitary gland. Okay, we just went over the anterior pituitary gland disorder. What do you think so far? I hope you're getting a hang of it because we're more than halfway there.
All right, we're about to jump into the posterior pituitary gland disorders. It's time to amp up our game and skyrocket your confidence. We're going to conquer these together, turning challenges into victories. So don't forget to head over to qdnurses.com slash start and sign up for my email list to grab your 160 free digital flashcard. And since you've gotten this far, hit that red subscribe button below to stay updated with all our latest insights and tips. When you subscribe, hit the like button and share my video, you're supporting me and I want you to know how much it means to me. All right, get ready to learn about the posterior pituitary gland disorders. Antidiabetes insipidus, abbreviated to DI. Diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus can get mixed up easily. Know that diabetes insipidus occurs when there is too little ADH being produced by the posterior pituitary gland. The kidney tubules are not able to reabsorb water. You must keep this in mind when it comes to diabetes insipidus because you will be able to answer NCLEX questions properly with this key fact. This can be caused by stroke, trauma, or surgery. There is central diabetes insipidus where there is a decrease of ADH being produced. Then there is nephrogenic di diabetes insipidus when ADH production is actually fine, but the kidneys are not responding to the production of ADH. Postural hypotension can occur. Are you wondering what is the difference between postural hypotension and orthostatic hypotension? It's your lucky day because there is no difference. They both mean the same thing. When the blood pressure drops, when the client transitions from a sitting or lying position and then stands up, dizziness, lightheadedness, or even fainting can occur. Blood pressure can stabilize quickly after the blood pressure stabilizes. If pastoral hypotension can occur, the nurse must expect to provide a safe environment and observe for potential complication. Kidneys regulate blood pressure, so this will help you put two and two together. Electrolytes must be monitored because dehydration can occur with diabetes insipidus. The client may report excessive thirst. Because the kidneys cannot conserve water properly, excessive urine production and excess thirst can occur. IV hypotonic saline may be administered to account for the excess urine production. Low urinary specific gravity, fatigue, polydipsia, excess urine production are all seen in someone that is diagnosed with diabetes insipidus. Vasopressin can be administered to treat diabetes insipidus. DI is a lot shorter than SIADH. You can differentiate that DI has too little ADH because it has less letters than SIADH. SIADH has too much ADH being secreted. It has more letters than DI. Quick NCLEX pop quiz! Arnie is a nursing student who is learning about pituitary gland disorders. Which of the following disorders is caused by hyposecretion of ADH that is caused by the posterior pituitary gland? A. Hyperparathyroidism B. Hyperpituitarism C. SIADH or D. Diabetes insipidus and the correct answer is D, diabetes insipidus. And I'm so proud of you for getting this one correct. Rationale, diabetes insipidus occurs when there is a hyposecretion of ADH. SIADH occurs when there is a hypersecretion of ADH. Hyperpituitarism occurs when there is a hypersecretion of growth hormones. Hyperparathyroidism is a hypersecretion of the parathyroid hormone, which can be shortened to PTH. 
On to the next topic, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, which is shortened to SIADH, because I'm not going to be saying that over and over again. So, SIADH occurs when there is an excess amount of ADH being produced. Remember that SIADH occurs when there is damage to the posterior pituitary gland or the hypothalamus. Cerebral edema or seizures can occur. Seizure precautions should be implemented. The nurse must observe for increased intracranial pressure signs and symptoms. Antidepressants, antipsychotics, and even chemotherapeutic agents can cause SIADH to occur. Post-brain surgery, the nurse should watch out for SIADH as a complication. Fluid volume overload, level of consciousness changes, weight gain, hypertension, low urinary output, concentrated urine, and hypertension are signs and symptoms to watch out for. Know that in diabetes insipidus, the nurse must watch for postural hypotension and how SIADH is the opposite, in which the nurse should watch out for hypertension. Low serum sodium concentration is seen in SIADH. Fluids may be restricted for clients with chronic SIADA to 1,000 milliliters per day or less. This is often the first step to treat SIADA to increase serum sodium levels. If IV fluids are administered, then the nurse must observe for signs and symptoms of fluid volume overload. Salt tablets, loop diuretic, and potassium replacement may be given. This is given to cautiously correct sodium levels and promote water excretion. SIADH can be caused by medication, cancer, or infection. Once the underlying cause is addressed, then SIADH may be corrected. If SIADH is caused by drugs, then the drug should be discontinued. Once cancer or infection is treated, then SIADH may be corrected. Vasopressin antagonists may be prescribed to decrease overproduction of SIADH. Remember that vasopressin is administered for diabetes insipidus, in which it is given for hyposecretion of ADH production. So, vasopressin antagonists can be given for hypersecretion of ADH production. And just like that, we've covered some key topics on the pituitary gland disorders. You now have a better understanding of how the pituitary gland works and how the body is affected when there is too little or too much production of hormones secreted by the pituitary gland. You now have a better understanding of the differences between the disorders that are affected by the anterior and posterior pituitary gland disorders. I'm so proud of you for making it this far. Looking for more tips and tricks to make your journey even more fun and engaging? Check out my next video where we dive into more essential nursing school hacks. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. Join us and turn your learning experience into an adventure. If you have any requests, Feel free to submit them anonymously to requests at cutienurses.com and I'll address them as soon as I can. You can also drop a comment below and we can start a conversation. Know that whatever situation you encounter in nursing school, you are not alone. There will be another nursing student who is just as stumped as you are. I appreciate all of your support, and it's your support that keeps me going to create more content. So please remember to like the video, subscribe, and share it with your fellow friends. See you in the next video, and keep believing in yourself because I definitely believe in you.